Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. In this morning, I'm bringing a message to you. I was meditating in the Word of God when it was revealed to me this message that I really have to bring to you. But the Holy Spirit, it was the power that I felt inside of me that said, I have to bring this message. When I was reading the Bible, and then I realized, oh, wait a minute, it is almost the end of September. It's coming the beginning of October. And apparently, to many Christians here in the United States, it think that it is okay that we can practice the sinful nature of the world and, and still call ourselves Christians. Um, I wanted to tell you it's not true. Everything that we see, that we hear, and that we bring our families to, we are being part of it. But unfortunately, many of us don't want to hear that. Many of us don't want to hear that we are wrong in that sense. But the Word of God is bringing this message through me. God has inspired me to bring this message to you because that's what He wants. It's not what I want. I had planned to do something else. But I was reading that and I felt like I had to come and do this first. So in the book of Acts, chapter 13, uh, Paul and Barnabas was... Barnabas were in their first trip together and here it happens that when the two of them sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There, they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bargesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent to Barnabas, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, now he doesn't only have a Jewish sorcerer, Bargesus, now there is also Elimas the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at the Elimas and said, You are a child of the devil, an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind, and for a time you will be unable to see the light of the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about he groped about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. So, I wanted to bring this message to you. I was meditating on this message. And apparently, sorcerer and magician are the same thing to God. And the reason I'm talking about this is because it's coming October, the month where there is more witchcraft, more worship to a false to satan and people don't realize that as christians they are being part of it god doesn't like it he does not he doesn't he's not pleased but the fact that as christians we are doing those things that he does not agree with he didn't agree with since the beginning of the time and he doesn't agree with it now we go to isaiah 47 and at the end of verse 9 says the, all these atrocities and bad things that's happening to this Babylonian, they will come upon you in full measure in spite of your many sorceries and all your potent spells. Yes. Then it says, disaster will come upon you and you will not know how to conjure it away. Brothers and sisters, Magicians with their trickeries or with their tricks, witchcraft with their spells, 
with the and with the magic. To God is both the same. In verse 12 says, keep on then with your magic spells and with your many sorceries. See, he's making both like the same, but he's making clear each one. And I'm so glad that the word of God was so written in a way to make sure that it's making magicians and sorceries individuals by name but in the same category because many people said oh well i don't practice witchcraft i am not agree with that oh but we are but they are the first one first in line to a magic show to see what trick the guy is gonna do but what the bible says about it keep on then with your magic spells and with your many sorceries which you have labored at since childhood now you may be not practice the witchcraft, you may be not practice the magic tricks, but visiting those places and watching those movies, you are being part of it. Your ears, your, your eyes that are watching your head, your spirit is being participant of something that the word of God is against it. And immediately the spirit of God is not with you. You are in your own in this one because you are being participant in something that God doesn't want you, your children, and your family to be part of. It says, for the others one that love to read the magazines or watch the news when they are telling you what is going to happen with the full moon and how the moon is going to change your fortune and how you're going to receive money and all those silly things that we find in the TV and the magazines. There we go. In the same Isaiah 47, now in the verse 13 says, all the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward. Those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. And it's so clear the word of God says, here are no calls to warm anyone. Here is no fire to sit by. God was not talking about a fire for you to feel cozy. God was saying that they are not going to be safe for the eternal hell, for the eternal fire. Because all those people that are practicing those things, and then people say, how do you dare to say those things to people that they are not going to be safe? Because the word of God says, Go to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 12. Begin there, it says, Behold, I am coming soon. This is Jesus. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Blessed be the ones who wash the robes. Who are the ones that wash the robes? Those who receive Jesus Christ. Those who receive Jesus as the Savior, as the only God. The one that receive Jesus and be apart from the world. The ones that live their sinful nature in their past and decide that they are going to follow Jesus and they are going to take a life straight forward in the word of God. A person that read the Bible and listen to the message in his life is changed. If you listen to a message that the word of God is bringing to you and you do not receive it, but still you practice things that the word of God is telling you not to, you don't have any wash robe. And let me tell you, you will not be entering in heaven because you cannot be having a bad life out even though you call christian and think that you're gonna go heaven it doesn't work that way we are saved by grace but god is very clear and he continues and say outside are the dogs those who practice magic arts the sexual immoral the murderers the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood and it's very clear we say those that practice magic arts. And so you think because you are simply watching, because you are simply listening, that you are not being part of it. Just 
think about it and let the word of God meditate, meditate on the word of God and let the word of God change what is inside of you. Because even though that we are going to be saved by grace, we cannot act like we never have heard the word of God and that we can act like we are in the world and that we are in the spirit of God because the two don't merge together. You either out in the world or you are in Christ and he gave us a free will for us to decide where do you want it to go? How do you want it to live? But the word of God says those who knows how to do what is right and don't do it is counted as sin. And the Bible also said it's better to never have known God than know him and not to do what is right. There is the word of God saying that. So if you know the word of God, don't play with, with the world. Don't be in the love with the world. Decide to follow Jesus and be straight on Jesus. And this is not the Bible obviously didn't only talk about those that practice sorcery and magic and the art in the in the shows with like Harry Potter and reading those books. Why? Those things don't bring the glory to God. Those, those books in those movies are not giving the glory to God. But sometimes we are the first one being participate in it. We are the first one participating on it. And we don't understand that we are being ministered by, by the spirit of darkness for being part of that. So I leave this message to you. If you are one of those that also have idolatry and love other images, there is also the outside of the world. And everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So I, I give you the word of God. You meditate on it. Revelations 22 verse 12 to the 15. And it was also the book of Acts chapter 13. And I just wanted to make clear and tell you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who brings the word of God. It is the word of God. Everyone that have ears and can hear, let them hear. So have an amazing weekend and don't stop meditating in the word of God. And God bless you.